Nothing is more heartwarming than a rags to riches story. A story of someone coming up from nothing and through hard work and dedication making a name for themselves. Well, this is not one of those stories. This is a story of someone who tried to make something of themselves, embarrassing themselves a lot along the way, and then just as it seemed they were about to make it, the ghosts of their past came back to haunt them. And then even after all of that, he still somehow managed to make it even worse. From movie star to murderer, the story of Joe Son. because it really helps me in the algorithm. But before we get started, it is, in fact, your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has transformed gaming on the move to provide you with the ultimate portable handheld experience. With over 80 million other players, you will conquer raids, dungeons, campaign battles and bosses to build up your champions along the way and take part in my personal favourite mode, the PvP Arena. In addition, there are hundreds of artefacts and buffs with over 600 unique champions to choose from and the list is growing, so you can fight your battles whatever way you wish. And Raid has got something special happening right now. They've just released a legendary champion based off of the MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. As well as taking on dragons and ice golems with her bare fists, Ronda's backstory takes some inspiration from her background in combat sports. Born to a minor Bannerlord house, Ronda trained hard with her seven brothers to become a warrior as they were expected to be. During one tournament run by her father, Ronda proved to be a natural and she took on four knights barehanded. She quickly became the talk of K-Rock and everyone wanted her to fight for them. Eventually, she would make her way to the arena city of Velazar, fighting until she became queen of the arena. All of this by using her bare fists. You can get Ronda for free right now. Whether you're a new or long time player, all you need to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February the 20th and Ronda is all yours. Use my link in the description box down below to download Raid for free on your phone or PC. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you can use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful items in the game, like a 3 day 100% XP booster, 500,000 silver and 5 full energy refills. Perfect for levelling Ronda up so she is at the top of her game. Also if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can claim exclusive rewards now. So if you want a starting boost in Raid Shadow Legends then hit the link down below or scan the QR code on the screen to get unique bonuses worth $30, that's 200,000 silver, an XP booster, an energy refill, an ancient shard and the epic champion Aina, so you can summon a great champion as soon as you get into the game. These rewards are only available to new players and only for the next 30 days and you can find these rewards here in your inbox. Joseph Hyunmin Son was born on the 22nd of November 1970 in Gwangju, South Korea. Not much is known about his early life until his parents emigrated to America while Joe was still young. While growing up in America, Joe developed a great interest in physical sports, especially mixed martial arts. He loved it so much that he started to train for a career in MMA, which started in 1994. But it turns out that just because you dream something, it doesn't mean you'll be very good at it. And Joe was a, a very bad fighter, even for an amateur. But he still somehow managed to get into the UFC. In his first fight for UFC 4, Joe Son would be billed as a black belt in Taekwondo. But he had also invented his own martial art called Joe Son Do, which to this day has absolutely no evidence of even existing or being a real martial art because nothing has ever even been written or recorded about it. 
And Joe's son was to go against Keith Hackney, who was known at the time for winning against a £600 sumo wrestler. £400 above his own weight. Joe's son weighed in at nearly £240, which was £30 heavier than Hackney. But Joe was only 5 foot 4, so a manlet. It should have been a straightforward standard fight, but it was both painful and comedic since most of the fight was just Joe's son being punched in the balls over and over and over again. It's, it's actually very, very difficult to watch. And in case you're wondering, why the hell could he do that? Oh, good God, old UFC, old UFC from the 90s, it had pretty much no rules. And then rules got added as time went on. But old UFC... <sighs> I wish we still had old UFC. But anyway, Joe obviously uh, desperately <laughs> tapped out of the fight, which... I mean, Jesus Christ, after taking 20 punches directly to the balls, I, I, I think we all would. And yes, there is full footage out there of this full, hilarious and hard-to-watch fight. However, I'm not going to show it in this video because... YouTube. Even though the video of the fight is on YouTube. After his failure in MMA, Joe decided to start looking for other careers, and he chose acting, so he could at least pretend to be a badass. He landed a small role as a gunman in the 1993 movie Joshua Tree, starring Dolph Lundgren, and a year later he landed a bigger part as a thug leader called Beefy in a movie that was titled Blood Fist 5 Human Target, a title that just screams blockbuster bargain bin. And all of the movies he starred in were usually straight to VHS cheesy action movies. And if this guy doesn't already look familiar, I mean, this is probably going to be in the thumbnail of the video, his biggest claim to fame was when he was cast as the character Random Task in the 1997 movie Austin Powers. He played a silent, shoe-throwing henchman that was meant to be a parody of the James Bond villain, Odd Job. And despite his MMA failure and his other movie roles, this role is what put Joe Sun in the spotlight and what most people would recognise him for. And while he was acting, he was still taking part in MMA. Despite his embarrassing loss in his first fight, Joe picked himself up and tried to get into kickboxing. But after losing his first match in Japan, he became rather apathetic about the whole thing and dropped it straight away. It took him another eight years to try getting into professional fighting again. And in 2002, he entered the ring wearing a leopard print thong, full makeup and his signature bowler hat. And just before the round began, he gave his opponent Yusuke Imamura a hug. Round one didn't last very long, however, as Joe gave up after complaining he had an elbow injury. Joe became a regular spectacle. In fact, people were more entertained by his over-the-top walkouts than with the fight itself, because Joe just honestly couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. In one of his walkouts, Joe was shouting Bible verses while carrying a giant cross on his back to the ring. But embarrassingly, because Joe was so small and the cross was so heavy, he had to give up carrying it halfway and then just awkwardly walk to the ring <laughs> the rest of the way on his own. I mean, it was, it's, it was really awkward to fucking watch. And what makes this even more embarrassing is the fact that Joe actually stole this idea for this walkout from another fighter that he used to ringside for. Joe Sun ended up starring in Pride Volumes 1 and 2 and also Extreme Pancreation 2, losing every single match in the first round, one round only lasting 30 seconds. His last fight ended in him being knocked out. This meant that his fighting record was now four losses and zero wins. A good sign that he was terrible at professional fighting and he should probably consider something else. 
So again, Joe Sun became a nobody. Only recognised for his role in Austin Powers, since after that he got no other acting offers whatsoever, and occasionally being mocked for his atrocious MMA performance. At this point, you might be feeling a little bit of sympathy for this guy. You know, it's such a shame that his dreams got crushed. Well, let's, let, let, let's hold on to that thought for now. May the 16th of 2008 is when Joe Sun's name would be in the media again. But not for MMA or acting, but because he had fell off hard and he committed felony vandalism after kicking in the door of his roommate's car during a dispute. He was sentenced to 60 days in jail and probation. The probation part, however, didn't go too well because Joe Sun refused to report his current residence to his probation officer. This was a violation of his probation, so it earned him another 90 days behind bars. Also, this violation of his probation meant that Joe Sun had to provide a DNA sample to the police. Now, whenever you provide a DNA sample to the police, they run it through their database to see if it matches any DNA found in past unsolved cases. Guess where this is going? So now we come to the reason why I said you shouldn't feel any sympathy for the guy. Because the DNA that Joe Sun had provided linked him to a cold case, which was the gang rape of a 19-year-old woman, who to this day is referred to using the alias Victoria. On the night of Christmas Eve in 1990, she was kidnapped, tortured and repeatedly forced upon. Since Joe Sun was already locked up for his probation violation, he had no chance to escape, but he still denied having anything to do with the event. Victoria, however, had also identified Joe Sun's picture from a lineup, which, on top of the DNA evidence, was pretty damning. On the night of the attack, Victoria was driving home from a festive day out with her friends, and as she approached her home, she noticed that the gate to the private residential car park was left open. This was the first sign that something wasn't quite right, but it could have just been left open by another resident. As she pulled in, the lights above her parking spot flickered, and she got the feeling that she wasn't alone. Soon after, a man walked up to her car and stated that he was lost and in need of directions to the beach, which was a little strange because it was the middle of winter and it was freezing. It was then that she noticed there was another man approaching from the opposite side of the car. The first man, who was Joe Sun, dropped the act and both he and the second man, Santiago Guyton, attacked Victoria. They put a gun to her head, however, her puppy was in her coat pocket and despite its size, it decided to protect its owner by biting Gaitan's hand, making him step back in pain and giving Victoria a chance to run proving once again that dogs are just far too good for us. The men chased after Victoria and grabbed her. Joe was able to grab her by her hair and he started punching her. She tried to scream, but Joe's son held her head up and gestured towards Guyton, who was now pointing his gun at the window of her neighbour's house. She was told that if she made any noise and alerted them at all, the first person who came to the window would be shot, and it would be her fault. She decided to give in, and she was knocked out and stuffed into the back of a van that the men were driving. They then started driving around town, and what would follow would be some of the most horrific few hours in Victoria's life, with a group of men taking turns to go into the back of the van. And that is as much detail as I'm willing to give. There is a full police report of everything that happened, and this is usually where I would say, oh, just go and Google it yourself because I can't show it on YouTube. Just don't. Just, just, just trust me when I say it's bad. Fast forwarding again to 2008, Joe was taken to be charged in Orange County, California 
Originally, he was given 17 sexual offence charges, which would have put him in jail for 275 years to life, which seems a little bit redundant. But the statute of limitations meant that he could only be charged with some of the offences. The charge sheet was as follows. Five counts of rape, two counts of forcible sodomy, two counts of sodomy in concert by force, seven counts of forced oral copulation, and one count of penetration with a foreign object, that foreign object being a firearm. As everyone starting to understand why I didn't want to go into detail. It's, would you believe, worse, however, since there was torture involved as well. Victoria had been bitten, kicked, punched, and she could barely see due to the men poking her contact lenses into her eyes. Both Joan Guyton had also told Victoria that they were members of the gang Sons of Samoa, and they even carved SOS into Victoria's skin. They weren't associated with the gang at all, this was just an effort to mislead the police when they attempted to investigate. Joe and Gaetan threatened her with a pistol and repeatedly told her that they were going to kill her and throw her corpse off a cliff. After hours of being forced upon and tortured, Joe and Gaetan eventually kicked Victoria out of their van into the extreme cold with her underwear tied around her eyes. Now, this next part, the roles might be reversed because there seems to be a little bit of disagreement over who did what, but I'll just tell this version of events. But there's a lot of debate over whether or not it was Joson that said this or Gaitan that did that, so I'll just tell this version. Joson then aimed the gun at her, and just as she thought she was about to be murdered, Gaitan wrapped his coat around her. Joe became angry about this because Guyton was kind of going against their whole hardcore Sons of Samoa gang larp. But Guyton just said to him, She's cold. Oh, how, how nice, how lovely. Eventually, Joe's son started to count while pointing the gun towards Victoria. Then, just as she thought she was about to be shot, Joe's son said, it's Christmas, it's your lucky day. And then the men drove off. Victoria ran to the nearest house she could find and banged on the door. The residents immediately pulled her inside and called the police. The police wanted to take her to hospital straight away because her physical condition was horrific. But before she would let them take her, she demanded to be taken back to the place that she was first attacked to look for her puppy, who had ran away during the initial scuffle. They arrived at the location, and there was no sign of the puppy, and they thought it was either dead or had run away, which only made Victoria search more desperately. Eventually, she heard whining from a nearby bush, and she was reunited with her puppy. Apparently, the police at the crime scene even shed a few tears after seeing the joy that this puppy brought her after such a terrible event. Like, the puppy made her forget for a second the absolute horror she had just gone through. But she still had to go to the hospital, where DNA evidence was collected from her body in order to find the men that attacked her. Police also contacted informants who were connected to the Sons of Samoa to try and get some leads on the attackers. But when all of the informants had absolutely no information or hadn't even heard about the attack, the police immediately knew they were being misled. Despite all of this though, Victoria still had to wait 18 traumatic years to get justice, and every Christmas became a very dark time for her. During Joe's questioning, the interviewer barely knew who he was, but of course, Joe had to mention his claim to fame. And you said that you were uh, an actor. What do you do with acting? Um, I do comedy, okay. play bad guys sometimes. Do you see Austin Powers? Uh -huh. um, I play a little role in part one. Okay. What else have you do? You just act? Is that um, how you make your living? Just acting and... I, I'm a professional fighter. What kind of fighter? 
MMA. You can find me on Wikipedia, believe it or not. On September the 19th, 2011, Joe was sentenced to seven years to life and Guyton got 17 years and four months, since during the attack he was the one that was mostly using the gun. And you would think that that would be the end of this story for Joe's son, but nope. Just a month into his sentence at Wasco State Prison, Joe was accused of murdering his cellmate by beating him to death. Apparently, by using Joe Sundo. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I have no idea why I find that funny. So, I mean, you could at least say that Joe Sun won at least one fight in his life. And that might seem a little bit insensitive of me, but his cellmate was 50-year-old Michael Thomas Graham, who was actually in prison for violating his own parole for failing to register as a sex offender. The guards opened the cell up one morning to find Joe's son standing by the door while Graham was laying dead on the bottom bunk. Joe's son was immediately put into solitary confinement and he was then charged with the murder of Graham. It took them years to settle on a verdict, but finally in 2017, Joe's son was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter, which added another 27 years to his sentence. So now, Joe has 34 years to life as his total sentence in California State Prison. This, this whole thing is just like extremely fucked up because I, I remember seeing the Austin Powers movies years ago and I thought all the scenes with Joe's son were really funny, like when Austin Powers finally takes him out with a Swedish penis pump of all things, but those scenes have now completely lost their magic when you know that the guy in them committed some of the worst, most heinous and most disgusting crimes that you've ever heard. Crimes that were so bad that they had to be cut from this video. Joe son, more like, damn son, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody subscribe.